Well, we all know it's election season, and with me now is um, Justice of the Peace candidate, uh, Amy Cellini. Amy Jo, I should say. Joanne. Joanne. Okay. Yes. Because that's uh, on the sample ballot that I received, it says, has uh, Amy Joanne Cellini. Cellini. That's correct. Right. Joanne, uh, Joanne was my mom. Uh, I was very, very uh, close with my mom, and I lost her to cancer. And uh, I knew she would want to be a part of this. She would love to be here. Uh, and I, the only thing I could do was put her on the ballot. And they said, all you have to do is put her in quotes. And that's what we did. So it's Amy Joanne Cellini. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty well, cool. That's very sweet. Yeah. Very sweet. Why did you decide to, to run for a judgeship? Well, you know what? I, I practice in justice court. Probably about 95% of my cases are in justice court. And I've been doing it now for about 16 years. So I'm there every day, and it's always been in the back of my mind, once I had the experience and was you know, ready to, to go to that next level, that it was, it, it was something that I, I knew I would be good at. Uh, and I, I put a lot of thought into this, into the department to go after. And um, it's just it's something that doing criminal defense was what I do now. And prior to that, I, was a, I worked at the DA's office. And in doing criminal defense, you put the faces to the, some of these crimes. Now, I'm, I'm not talking about the, the serious crimes. I'm talking about some of the petty crimes, the justice court crimes, if you will. There's a lot of misdemeanors that go through there. And, and you see that there's some good people. I mean, we all have the brother or the, the sister, the best friend, the neighbor, that maybe they get in trouble. And if we can help them to, to break that cycle, we want to do that. And, and I get a lot of people like that. And uh, justice court is something as a judge that you can actually really help facilitate that. Um, on the other side of it, if, if you wanted to be tough, and you can, you can also ruin a person's life. And so you need to have somebody in there that has some compassion, but on the other side of it has common sense. Um, and Ed, I always tell everyone, you know, the easiest part of justice court is to keep the bad guys in, in jail. I mean, that, that's a no-brainer. A second grader can do that. But we need more, and the people deserve more. And that's what I, I intend to do. And anyone that knows me and knows how I handle cases knows that's what I'm going to do. And, and the, the coolest part for me is, is a defense attorney is, is all the endorsements that I've received, people that, that trust in me and believe in me. And uh, top of the list is all law enforcement. How do you go about getting um, endorsements? You talk about you have endorsements of uh, yeah. law enforcement. Well, what, how, how does what, that process work? <clears throat> what happens is, is that the various <clears throat> unions or, or groups that are associated with law enforcement, Metro would be PPA or PMSA, the supervisors, so on and so forth, they will send you a letter, all the candidates. So if you run, you're going to get a letter saying, come interview with us, tell us about yourself and why we should endorse you. Uh, and then they have a closed meeting, and what goes on in that meeting, no one knows, and they make their decisions. Now, a lot of times the incumbents will get the, get the endorsements, um, but in this case, uh, we have 30. Right, and the incumbents, of course, would be judged based upon Correct. past conduct, Correct. past decisions, and either law enforcement does or veterans do or do not like it. Um, how, but it seems to me like it's a very big advantage for you to have uh, been in the district attorney's office and also be a defense attorney because you have come into a potential job like this with a balance. Correct, and that's your, your app. You hit the nail on the head, and it's a balance, and that's exactly what it is is that you know what the law is. I mean, mo most attorneys, most good attorneys, know what the outcome is likely going to be when they go into a case. Um, and, you know, you do your homework. Um, and, but at the same time, it's where that common sense comes in. You know, if, if we have a kid that's coming in and, and he, maybe he's short a little bit on community service, <coughs> do we want to put him in jail for 30 days? I mean, what's, it's thir 133 bucks a day for his taxpayers. I pay my taxes. I know you do. I'd rather, you know, we have somebody employed. Why would I want to put him in for 30 days? Because yeah. technically you could, because he didn't finish his community service. Why would you do that to someone? They're only going to come out and be a burden back on society because he's likely going to have lost his job, could be facing eviction. What does that do? And then what's his faith? What do you think the chances of that individual repeating his crime or a no, crime? I, I think it's very interesting, uh, Amy, that you make the, the, the case that it's easy to put somebody in jail. The hard part is, what are the alternatives and how do Correct. we, you know, move forward, with, help this person move forward so they don't repeat this kind of act again? In that regard, Justice Court over the years has had a lot of these um, specialty courts. Correct. That they, the drug court, the veterans court, things like that. Have, have you given any thought to what um, your interest would be? 
Well, I mean, you know, when you first start off, you're going to go wherever they tell you to go. Um, but I, I, I would love to do Veterans Court because I have, you know, I have a strong uh, desire to help the veterans. It's something that I've done well before this election. I've always done that. Um, I've worked with Arnold Stock over at Veterans Village uh, a lot, and, and no one does more than, and than him, in my opinion. He's a great, great man. Um, and there's so many veterans out there that need assistance. And, you know, when we have drug court, and drug court's been around for years, and, and it, it, it's done very well, and it should be. But I think, you know, why wouldn't, Veterans Court is relatively new. Um, and I believe it was Judge Tobiasen that actually started that over in, in Justice Court, did a phenomenal job. And, and now it's, 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 so when these veterans get in trouble, they can come in and they can get the counseling that they can, you know, that they deserve and that they need. And hopefully the case will get dismissed and get sealed and then they can move on with their lives. Because these guys, a lot of them come back, I mean, they see things that you and I couldn't even fathom. And, you know, they may you know, pick up on drugs or alcohol and they get into a little bit of trouble, and we're talking misdemeanors. You know, they shouldn't uh, have to go through the court system without assistance. Well, who, who makes that decision? If a veteran gets arrested, and let's say it's a first offense, he got back from serving overseas, he came back, uh, you know, he can't get a job, he has no, nowhere to, you know, to live, uh, wife has left him now that uh, you know, he's happens. been gone for, uh, you, know, uh, you, know, for uh, you know, for three years, and, um, so now he's in the court system. Who makes that initial determination whether it goes through the typical process or goes into through the uh, Veterans Court? Well, it's a great question. What, what is supposed to happen is when they come in, they'll have signs all throughout Justice Courts, the various departments, and they'll say, if you're a veteran, notify the judge. So ideally, the attorney who's representing this individual, be it a public defender, a private attorney, or the individual himself, mm -hmm. when they come into court, should notify the court. And then they can transfer it over to, now it's Judge Saragossa. And it's up to them to decide whether or not they're going to accept them into, into yeah. the Veterans and Court And she program. herself is a, she a is. veteran. She is. Right? So yeah. she, she's, she's doing a great job. Like you, yeah. is very aware of the kind of problems they have. Oh, and there, you yeah. know, the saddest thing in, in doing this, um, we did the, uh, I do the Ask a Lawyer program with the vets at the old VA where people just come in and they, they're veterans and they have just various legal questions. And, and I was talking to one and it was just such a sad case because this individual was a perfect candidate for veterans court but he committed the offense at the VA hospital well that makes it federal just because mm -hmm. of the location our federal court here does not have a veterans court which I just is unbelievable to me does that is that uh, is something that other cities have or other regions? there's some yeah. yes some do but we yeah. don't and it needs to change and I've told everyone that I've spoken to when I go to there's a lot of events as you know when you run for office right and I tell the Republicans and the Democrats, you need to make this an issue. And they These say are, they will. This is a federal issue. This would be Correct. something that you yes. write to your congressperson yes. about. Right? Yes. They should yeah. be angry about it. And uh, I can't believe it's been going on for so long and nobody's addressed it. Right. So when you're dealing with uh, problems of veterans, um, what is a typical problem? Is it benefits, they get injured and apply for benefits, or is it... Well, or is it uh, <coughs> evictions or things like that? It's, you know, the benefits are, are, are a big problem because they're so complicated. Um, I, I don't focus on that myself. I do the criminal aspect of it. There's a lot of them that are in warrant for various crimes such as trespassing, things, things of that nature, mm -hmm. and they don't know how to remedy that. Um, but I do know in terms of, of there's a tremendous amount of red tape, and it's some of them on their own. But, you know, if they don't know to ask for it, they won't get the benefits. And there's attorneys that have a hard time getting through it. Can you imagine a, a person on their own trying to get through this yeah, it, to deal with our government? on that issue. Um, there's a lot of work that needs to be done for, for individuals. I mean, we're getting there, but there's a long way to go. It's a very, very uh, complicated and, uh, process, yes. as you're saying. The, uh, the election. Yes. Uh, we have a primary election. Now, um, it's a presidential year, so um, the caucuses kind of already happened, so it's not mm -hmm. as if we have a presidential race in the primary. Yeah. Uh, fortunately or unfortunately, Justice of the pieces have to run countywide. You don't Correct. run in a, in a particular neighborhood or, or district. So um, that costs a lot of money. It's um, it's very difficult to uh, to you know to start walking homes when you have to walk the entire county. Like an assembly Correct. person walks in their district, a county commissioner walks in their district. You've got the whole the whole the whole county, yeah. right? 
So how, I mean, isn't it difficult to, A, get your message out countywide for this kind of election, and at the same time, you think about it's a, off, you know, it's a primary election where, where the number of people, since there's no presidential you know, ticket right. on, in this election, is really limited. How many, how, many people, how many voters will we have in this primary session, do you know? Gosh, I don't know. I have no idea. You I'm looking over there? at the expert over there. <laughs> do we know? 150,000. 150,000. 150,000, okay. We've got a couple million people. That's it. That's right? a small so, percentage. Right, so you have, uh, five, what is that, five, six percent of the population. Now, not all, not all of them are voting age, I get that. But you have a very small percentage of people. In these judge races, um, and you have what, two opponents? Yes. So if somebody, if any one of the three of you get 50% plus one vote, then you don't have to run in the general. Correct. So this, even though it's a primary election, it is uh, dispositive. Yes. Of, of potentially dispositive, right? Correct. So how do you get the word out? I guess that was a very long uh, prelude well, to my question. Well, you have, uh, I tell you, you know, you do, you go through the mail, um, you send out mailers to, to voters. And, um, and you tell them about yourself. Uh, the main thing for me is, is go to events and you meet people and, and word of mouth. I mean, within the legal community, the word of mouth, is, as you know, is, 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 is very, very significant. Um, and, you know, and the other thing is TV. I mean, you have to use media. You know, it, it's, you're right, it's very expensive. And, uh, but that's how you get the message out. Because people don't know about judges. Well, how do we tell them? The only way you can do that is, is you either are fortunate enough to meet them and have a conversation with them or through the media. What, what do you think are the qualities that one needs to be an effective judge? I think they need to be, have, exercise number one, common sense. That's the, the number one. Um, and I think they need to have a little bit of compassion uh, and they have to be, they have to be balanced. Um, as I said, you know, we had talked about this earlier. The easiest part is, is keeping the bad guys in. That's the no-brainer part. Mm -hmm. um, but we're dealing with a jail that's just it's busting at the seams. It's, it's so overcrowded right now. And that goes I mean, back to what you originally said. It's just too easy to put people well, in jail. Well, yeah, it and when solve they're 20 plus million over budget already, and they're not even at the end of their fiscal year, um, you know, you got a problem. And, and I don't want, I hate to think of somebody with a petty crime going in and then somebody getting out on an early house arrest or something like that who has a violent offense because they don't have room. Right. So Doesn't make sense. Sometimes you get these nonviolent offenders, yeah, and they go yeah. in, and they come out violent. That's a possibility, and don't. It's also a risk to the the COs that work there. I mean, they're you know, I don't. What is it? Over a hundred people for one person. I don't know the numbers, but it's you know, it's pretty scary. Now, in addition to criminal issues, um, Justice Court does have a lot of other responsibilities. Correct. Right. They handle landlord tenant. That's right. Disputes. Um, small personal injury cases, small um, small claims cases. That's correct. Right. Yeah. So how does how do those jobs get divided up? Well, generally the the senior judge, I believe, will will allocate who does what. Um, but my understanding is is the justice court just or county commission just approved someone to do, I believe, all the landlord tenant issues. It's either that or all the small claims. Uh, a hearing master for that. So you'd have to talk to, right now it's Judge Bonaventure who does that. Um, but usually the, when you first start, you, you will start with the landlord tenant and they generally have that for a year to two years and you transfer over to criminal. If you were to be elected, what would be the most um, um, stirring thing you'd want to accomplish? What, 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 do you be, what would you be most passionate about? I, I would just be most passionate about being consistent and being fair and treating people with respect. Um, you know, I've said it time and time again, just because that bench is elevated, it's not a throne, and you shouldn't treat people. Um, you shouldn't get that black robe syndrome. And I think if you're consistent and you're nice uh, and you're respectful to people, um, that will pay dividends in the long run. Right, and, and, and what do you do to prepare? I mean, you, have to, you know, we have a judicial college yes. in Nevada. A lot of up people don't Reno. know about it, up in Reno. Yeah. Right, and all our newly elected uh, judges and existing judges as well 
go and learn how to be a judge? I mean, because you have to transition from a no, district attorney it's, and yeah. defense attorney into a judge. It is. Right? Well, the main yeah. thing is just knowing the law, number right. one, which which I do. I mean, I'm, I'm there every day. But and the other thing is just, you know, um, you're right, though. I mean, there is that transition. So you would go up to judicial college and, and know what the, you know, you got to get familiar with the judicial canons um, and make sure you don't violate those things. But mm -hmm. I think if you utilize, like I said, just what we've been talking about, the common sense, and, and you follow the law, and you treat people with respect, you're not going to run into any problems. Do you have a mentor when you think about your ideal judge? Is there a mentor in your experience that you have, or, or characteristics of somebody? Well, there are, but I don't want to name them because they're still on the bench, and I don't yeah. know. I think that okay. would... Okay. How about the characteristics? You talked about passion, you talked about knowledge, oh, yeah. temperament. Compassion, temperament. Um, common sense. I right. mean, again, I keep going back to that. But, um, you know, I just think it's just, you know, you do the right thing. I mean, justice court is the gateway for pretty much everything mm -hmm. in the criminal justice system. So you want someone up there that's going to utilize their experience and do what's best, not just, I mean, for society in general, but also for the individual. Okay. Well, as I said earlier, um, early voting has begun. It has begun. And it goes through uh, June, uh, yeah. June 10th. So we have, uh, you know, what do you have at the expert off the side right. who knows uh, all the answers? Right, who feeds me the, the answers. <laughs> June 10th. You have it until June 10th. And then after that, then uh, the election, uh, the 14th. you can actually vote on the four Tuesday, the, the 14th. Correct. If, so right now you have to hit one of the malls or hit one of those uh, local uh, trailers uh, in your neighborhood to, to vote. So good luck, Amy Cellini. Oh, thank you so much. Good and uh, I can't tell you what a pleasure it is to be here and to reach out to people. So I appreciate you having me here. Well, we're always looking for qualified people to become judges. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. We'll see you next week. Enough said. Call Ed. EdBernstein.com.